I picked this poem to begin with because in a sense it's very central to everything I've written almost before and after in a way. I've always been concerned about time and place, but mainly about, mainly about time. I've been intrigued by the idea that, you see, there's real time. The time is a performance, like in music, there's real time in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in, a, concert, in a concert, say. It's the length of time it takes. There's also the... That, that, that can get longer or shorter. Same with the poem. The poem can take a certain amount of time to read, or it can get longer or shorter, depending on how it goes. And in that, in that time, you can go backwards and forwards as far as you like, like a cinema. You can go back 30 or 40 years if you want to, in the, in the, same, in the same time. Time's time elapsed. Now, this is called Fire and Snow and Carnivale. And it's written in, it was written in, in Umbria in, uh, in 1992, I think. And my son, Neil, was going off to the Carnivale, the Shrove Tuesday Carnivale in the town. He was going dressed as Zorro and he had a hat on, with a big gold band around it, and he had a painted on moustache, burnt cork. He had two swords and he had a gold, a gold handled knife and a cape that his mother had made for him and put great gold trimmings on the, around, the, around the sides of it. Off he was going bravely anyway to the carnival and he was nine years of age, almost ten. It was a very, very cold day, desperately cold day. And I was sitting up at the, I was standing at the, ed- the gate with uh, some of the neighbours. We were gathering up twigs and leaves and brambles and all the rest that had been laying, lying around. To treat us, so that the treat us in the winter, gathering them up and burning them, putting our hands out because it was very, very cold. And one of my neighbours said to me, she said, In inverno fuoco e bello, in winter fire is beautiful. This is an extraordinary moment to me because in winter fire is beautiful, it says everything. It's the whole history of, of humankind seems to, me, seems to me to be in those words, you know, from the cavemen and the fire to the survival of Europe, thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So the poem began at that moment. That was the beginning of the poem for me. And then Neil was going off to, to, the, to the carnival. The sand in the yard is all very hard from the cold. The snow on the, furthest, snow on the surrounding hills. Uh, dark, dark weather. It all came together. And one of the things about this poem for me is it's a perfect example of how poems and experience and the idea and what's in your mind and your own history and the history of things around you, they all seem to come together at the same time. The building blocks come together and fall into place. In this one, they fall into place very, very, very remarkably, certainly for me. Uh, one of the things I can say about it as well is that it's, I've always been interested in writing songs. I've never written any songs. I had, up to this stage, I hadn't written any songs, I don't think. Um, I sung a lot of songs, but I hadn't written any. And after I wrote this poem, I was up in, in Anna McKerrig, and Brendan Graham said to me, have you ever got any songs? And I said, no, Brendan, I have no songs. I'd love to write songs. If I knew how to do it, I would. So I gave him some, some songs, of, some poems of mine, and he came into me about four days later with a version of this, of this, this poem in music. He'd taken out what he wanted, left, 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 rejected everything else, just took exactly what he wanted, set it to music, and it's gone all around the world as a, as a, as a song called Fire and Snow, Win, Winter Fire and Snow. And uh, it's the second cousin of this poem. Fire and snow and carnivale. In winter fire is beautiful, beautiful like music. It lights the cave. Outside the people going home drive slowly up the road. The strains are phone in Verdi on the radio. Three hours back a fall of snow sprinkle the furthest hill where clouds have hung all winter. The day gets dark uneasy, dark and darker still. And you, little son, come home, riding the tail of the wind in triumph, tall and almost ten, with confetti in your hair, home successful from the Carnivale, with your two black swords and your gold-handled knife. I feel the chill and hear the absent sound of snow when you come in. White, fantastic scorpions spit in the fiery centre of the great plague pictures cauterized. In winter, fire is beautiful and generous as music. May you always come this safely home in fire and snow and carnivale. And one other, thing, one other thing about that poem, perhaps, is that, you know, what else, what else can you say to children? What else can you say to them when they're preparing to leave home? You know, however early it is, they have to leave eventually. What else can you say is, you know, go with my blessing, come back, come back safe. That's my poem.